Hi everybody. Okay, I am excited to talk about this topic today. This is one of my, I keep saying it's one of my favorite topics. I have a lot of favorite topics, but I did a podcast episode on this this morning and then I thought, I think I want to talk about this some more because this really is, uh, this is important to a lot of people, I think, and a lot of people, including myself, manage this. So um, if we haven't met, my name is Elizabeth Lyons. I'm the founder of Publish a Profitable Book. And we also have a free Facebook group that I'm gonna put the link to right above called the Self-Publishing Authors Alliance. I help writers and entrepreneurs get out of their own way so that they can write and publish a successful book. So the topic I wanna talk about today is imposter syndrome. You may or may not have heard of it. Uh, it seems to be a buzzword kind of making its way around, but it's a buzzword with good reason because a lot of people fear it. So I had gone out into a group that I'm a member of and posed the question. I was just kind of trying to gauge people's uh, mindsets. And I said, how many people in this group want to write a book? And this, there was no sales pitch or anything behind this. This was like purely research and information gathering. So how many people want to write a book? And I felt extremely confident that at least 60 or 70% of that group would say yes, because that's what the research shows, is that 60 to 70, if not 80 or more percent of people want to write a book. So sure enough, I'd say about 65% of people responded and said, me, I'd like to write a book. Hi guys, good morning. And so um, I continue to follow up with these, with these individuals, and I said, so why haven't you yet written it? And I wasn't challenging them. I wasn't like, so, you know, well, what's wrong with you? I was, I was inquiring, why? Why haven't you written it? Why aren't you writing it, et cetera? So they all gave me their answers. Now, one individual responded and said, um, I, I thought about writing this book several years ago, and I know it wouldn't make any money. So immediately my antenna are going up. Uh, I, I knew it wouldn't make any money. And um, also, I'm just, I don't, I, life has taken over and I don't really have time to do it. Okay. So I kind of, I didn't mean to pull him out, but I messaged him somewhat privately and I said, talk to me about this. This is interesting. What do you mean you know it wouldn't make any money? Like, how, how do you know that? Why? First of all, the group that he and I are both a member of is a very, it's a group of very driven, optimistic, positive, we can do the impossible people. So the fact that he was even coming out of the gate saying it can't make any money, I was surprised by. But I wanted to talk to him about it further. And he said, you know, once I do all the editing and the printing and the this and the that, I, I, just, I just don't really know how I would make my money back because I'm not an authority in this area, okay? So talk to me about time. What and we had that conversation, which I've had with you all here a million times. So we don't, no pun intended. We don't even need to go through it all again. But the, then the conversation ended because again, I wasn't trying to talk anybody into anything. I was. I'm very fascinated with the mindset of entrepreneurs in general. That's where my uh, fascination lies is with is with mindset. So I don't care what business you're building, what is standing in your way of getting there. And to be clear, the reason I'm fascinated with mindset is because I have had to take my brain out of my own head and shift it and then put it back in. So for anybody who's been paying attention to me for a while and has said, gosh, Liz, you're so positive and optimistic, I will put out there, my senior year in high school, I was voted biggest complainer. I know, it's shocking, but true. So I've been studying mindset and um, neuro-linguistic programming and all these things for years and years and years and I'm completely fascinated by it and I continue to be fascinated by it. So I was just curious what this group's reason is because these are a bunch of driven people. So why aren't you writing the book? Anyway, this individual again messaged me this morning and he said, hey, I have been thinking ever since this conversation yesterday that you engaged me in about this book and I've started to wonder a little bit more deeply why. Why am I not writing it? And what I realized, and I was like, oh, come on, say the word. I'm waiting for you to come on, do it, because I know it's going to happen. What I realized is that it's fear. And then I had to do like a happy dance, not because I was right, although I do enjoy being right, but it's just, it's validating because at the end of the day, 
The reason that none of us does anything that we want to do is because we're afraid of something. So I'm like, cool. I have got you on the fear train. That's great. Now, what are you afraid of? And he said, I'm afraid of looking like a fraud, which is code for imposter syndrome. I said, okay, why are you afraid of looking like a fraud? So to give this some basis, I'm not going to tell you his name or anything because I don't have permission to do that. And I, I like to, it doesn't matter anyway, but he wants to write a book about how he was um, kind of saved or recovered. Or I don't know what word he would use. These are not his words. These are my words from drinking too much by working out. And I'm, and he already has a title for the book too, which I'm not going to even share because it's so brilliant. I don't want someone else to use it. So he, he's thought far enough that he has a title that's really good. But the premise of it is, look, I was drinking too much. I know that it was affecting my life. And so the way that I overcame that and made my life better was through exercise. And I'm like, that's super cool. What's the problem? Well, if you look at my body, I don't really look like someone you'd think someone would look who exercises all the time. Now, I, I don't know. I don't even know what that, like, what that means necessarily. But clearly he has a feeling about it that didn't feel good to him. And so I said, okay, that's interesting. And he said, and I don't really, like, I'm just a normal person. You know, I don't, I don't really have any, like, degrees or anything that makes me in the right place to be able to say, here's how you can change your life from this to this by doing this, this, and this. So, I mean, I'd just be doing it to help people and, but I don't think I'd really make money and okay. So there are two things happening here. One, you're going in with the mindset that you can't make money, which means you're not going to make money. And two, you're going in with the mindset that I've certainly been um, a victim of as well, which is if I'm helping people with this book, I'm a horrible human being to take money for doing it. Like I should just give it away free. It should be my gift. So my first book was my gift for quite a while until my then husband was like, you, we're going bankrupt. Like, you, not really, but like you, we've paid to print all these books. Why are you just giving them to people? I don't know. We had to, again, mindset work. I had to address it. It was 10 years ago. We're past it. But the thing that I find curious about authors or business owners, but specifically we're talking about authors, perspectives on being a fraud. In this case, what I said to this guy was, question, is your book about how to get eight pack abs? No. Okay. Because I mean, if your book is like how to go from drinking, I don't think there's an eight pack. Okay, let's do it this. This isn't the title, but this could be pretty good. How to go from drinking a six pack to having a six pack. As a consumer who doesn't know you, I'm going to I'm going to hope that you have a six pack because if you don't, I'm confused. How can you teach me to do something that you didn't do or help someone else to do or something like what's the social proof that you can actually do what you say you can teach me to do, but that's not what you're saying. You're not saying how to go from a six pack, um, a six, what a six pack to a six pack. Did I say that right? Anyway. You're not saying that. What you're saying is how I went from drinking too much and slightly irresponsibly to not and being super happy in my life, super happy in my relationship, super happy in my career, joy filled every single day and feeling a ton of self-worth through an exercise routine. You're not selling how I got down to 2.3% body fat. You're selling how I found joy and happiness and contentment. So whenever anyone is trying to get past a challenge that they need a solution to, which is what all of this is about, by the way, they're looking for people with whom they can identify. So in this case, I actually believe that him not looking like Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, might be in his benefit, to his benefit. Because if a potential customer looks at his story or his uh, his book and says, oh, this guy can teach me how to like, my, here's my issue is I'm drinking too much and I need help stopping. But like, I'm not, I don't, I either don't believe I can get to this eight pack, 16 pack ab thing, or I don't want to. 
well, now you've, first of all, they're not going to become a customer. And second of all, he's missed, there's an opportunity that's been missed here because that's not what he's teaching. He's not teaching how to get a six pack. He's teaching how to live a healthy life as someone who was drinking too much and used exercise as their kind of new, I don't want to say addiction, but that's the, that's what I'm going with. Like that's where their focus was. Their focus was no longer on drinking. It was on working out. So here are my, here's my exercise for you. I want you to think about somebody that you follow as an expert. And I don't mean um, like a, a big name celebrity. I'm not talking about Tony Robbins. I'm not talking about nothing like that. But somebody who you follow, who to you has a ton of credibility, but isn't necessarily known worldwide. And the reason why this person has a ton of credibility is because he or she did a TED talk, made a YouTube video, wrote an article, um, put up a Facebook post, or you saw them in a Facebook ad, and what they were saying in their words, or with, you know, like orally or in writing, you connected with. And you thought, that's the problem. The problem they had is the problem I have. And so if they can get through it without a massive trust fund, a personal trainer living in the house, um, a zebra in the backyard, whatever, then I can too. And they're fun or they're serious or they're goofy or whatever it is that also draws you to them. Because it's not someone's credentials. that Credentials are impressive. But credentials without substance are nothing. They don't hold you. You will ultimately figure out that that person just has a lot of letters behind their name, but they can't get you where you want to go. And so that makes them not a fraud, but not a good fit for you. So the difference between a, an impo- there's a difference between an imposter and a liar. A liar says, I can teach you how to have eight pack abs in two weeks when he can't. An imposter is su- someone suffering from imposter syndrome is someone who feels like, uh, I don't know a hundred percent. Like I, I don't know if I come across as being the expert and credible because I don't have all these things. I haven't won these awards. I haven't been on this TV show. I've not, here's a story. When I first launched ready or not, here we come, which is now called, holy shit, I'm having twins appropriately. I, for the publicity of it, I did a bunch of morning news segments and I did radio shows and I did newspaper interviews and whatever. Everywhere I was, there was this, I don't understand why just my title of mom like wasn't enough, but it wasn't, I guess. So they needed to deem me a parenting expert. You guys, I wanted to lose my mind. I was like, there's no such thing as a parenting expert. And if anyone on earth goes on television and says, hi, I'm insert name and I'm a parenting expert, I am turning the channel. That, or I'm gonna go follow you around until you mess up, like until a kid has a panic attack or a a, 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 tantrum that you can't handle. Cause then I'm gonna be like, hmm. There's no such thing as a parenting expert. Like a parenting expert is just someone who gets through their day as a parent without like dropping someone off on the side of the road, okay? So that really bothered me. And the reason it bothered me is because I thought somebody who's watching this segment or listening to this segment is gonna see me in Target later. And Henry is undoubtedly gonna be flailing all of his appendages on the floor because I won't buy M&Ms at the checkout. And that person is gonna look at me and say, she's a fraud. Because she, I just saw her this morning on NBC saying, these are my five strategies for, de- for dealing with kids who are having tantrums in Target. And they are my five strategies, or they were. Like, now I'm just like, peace out. You're 16. I'm, I'm gone. But the, the final strategy in my set of strategies is to just accept this is a real bad day and tomorrow's going to be better and I only have control over myself. So... But when you position someone, when someone else positioned me in that way, I was like, oh God. And then I wrote, you cannot be serious. And it's all my rules 
for being a mom of five and an entrepreneur and do, you know, doing what I do and living life my way without losing my mind. It's not without losing my mind ever, which is exactly why I believe rule 26 is breakdowns are normal and necessary. So I write in the book about this one moment when I was like, I was losing it. It had been a really long day with all the kids and they were younger and I was losing it. And my then husband, David, my partner in parenting, came home and he was like, what, like, why are you freaking? I said, I got to get out of here. I, I can't, I need, to... why are you freaking out? Because it, look around, like read the room. And he said, are you writing a book about how to handle this stuff? And I was like, yeah, I am. And that doesn't mean though, that that means that I've figured out how to handle it like 97.6% of the time, but there's still, if I do my math correctly, 2.4% of the time when I re resort to rule six, which is get a treat of the moment and 26 breakdowns are normal and necessary. I mean, no one has it together all the time, no one. So you can find experts all over the place who are, you will be more likely to find experts, I love air quotes, who are jacking up their abilities and don't actually have them. Then you will experts who are super humble and can do so much more for people than they ever give themselves credit for believing. That's the crazy thing. Because your own unique experience, what you've been through, your unique personality, how you share your story, how you communicate with people, how people identify with you, what emotions you stir in people, that is completely unique to you. And it has zero, zero. Chris, I need to write what down? You write it down, I'm talking. It has zero to do with what degree you have with what. So I'll give you one more quick thing. In my spare time up until recently, I did project management too, um, of tech, like enterprise level tech projects. I managed all the tech, don't even ask. Anyway, my, my partner in parenting kind of does the same thing. At a, well, he manages the people who are managing the people. And he, we were talking about project management credentials, because now you can go out and you can spend a lot of money. And Chris, when you write that down, send it back to me, please, because I already forgot what I said. You can spend a lot of money to get certain letters after your name, like certified project management practitioner or something. I don't even know what they are. Anyway, one of the reasons people are doing that is because you can command a much higher salary if you are credentialed in the art of project management. Well, my partner in parenting said to me, you cannot imagine how many people come through the door. I'm not going to mention where he works, but come through the door and um, have all their credentials and they look great. The resume looks great. Everything looks great on paper. And we hire them. And within two weeks, it is clear that they could not manage like two sleeping dogs. So the thing is that sometimes those credentials mean that you're not only you were amazing before you got the credentials and now the credentials have just taken you up a step. Sometimes it's a total smoke and mirrors disaster. And sometimes you can pay less for the person who doesn't have all the credentials because they're not trying to pay off getting all the credentials, who's actually far more skilled at managing chaos because they understand emotions, they are a good communicator, they understand social cues and read body language well, and, and they know how to organize stuff. So that's just, I would like everyone to shift their mindset. Again, we're all about the mindset. I'm all about the mindset about what is it that makes you credible? And I will tell you right now that what makes you credible is being honest, transparent, genuine, and having integrity about the story that you're telling and what you're saying about, here's what I went through and here's how I managed it or got through it or dealt with it. Or, and if this helps you, awesome. And if it doesn't, there are about... 27, if not 27,000 other people out there who have been through and come through the exact same thing that you can go and try their techniques because no one will ever corner the market ever for everyone 
on how to get through a particular thing. There's always going to be an outlier. There's always going to be an outlier, 100%. So we've all got to get past this imposter syndrome. The, the final story, I know I keep saying the final story, but this really is it. I'll tell you is, and I don't remember who this was, but I heard a story once and I thought this was super interesting. There's a, there's a woman, there is a woman, not there was a woman, but there's a woman and she coaches entrepreneurs to go from six figure to seven figure businesses. That's her, that's her, that's her job. And she's done it. She had done it like many times. That's how she could, that was her social proof is I took this person and this person, she had testimonials and the whole thing. So this guy comes to her who was making like a little over $500,000 a year and he really wanted to go to the next level. And so he interviewed her and they got along very well and the rapport was great and everything was great. And finally, his final question to her was, do you make seven figures? And she said, no, um, I don't. But again, I've helped all these, I mean, that's irrelevant. Like, not that that's irrelevant, but it is because I, I don't do it, but I can help you do it. And he said, I just can't hire someone who's going to coach me how to do something that they've never done. And she said, I could totally understand that if they had never taught someone, not even just one other person, because it can't just be an isolated instance, but like mul multiple people. She had taken multiple people in multiple industries at multiple, I mean, the whole thing from six figures to seven figures, because her area of expertise was... Uh, funnily enough, mindset, and then a couple other like strategic things in there. But that was the key that was missing. So it didn't really matter what industry they were in. She wasn't teaching them, you know, superb techniques in sales or Facebook marketing or whatever the case was. So he said, I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't do it. She's like, that's cool. No problem. That year she hit seven figures in her business because it just hadn't happened yet. You know, her first year she coached like one or two or three people and, and just didn't hit seven figures. And then the next year, she kept doing it. And she was doing it all through word of mouth, I might add. And she didn't have fancy name, fancy degrees or fancy anything. She just understood it. And once people had the social proof of, yeah, she gets it. Because she did it for them and them and it, done. So I'd like you to believe in yourself more is the real message to this and get past the whole imposter syndrome thing. If you haven't gotten it yet, I shared, if you're not in the um, free Facebook group, the Self-Publishing Authors Alliance, today I shared, we have a new ultimate word tracker tool. It's awesome. So um, we spent quite a bit of time over the last couple of weeks building this. It's involved formulas, it, which is not fun for me, but we got through it. It will keep you, mo your momentum, it will keep you going. It will let you know exactly how many words you need to write a day to meet a specific goal. And it will let you know exactly when you're going to meet a goal if you're someone who only writes, and I say only, but if you just say, I'm gonna write 500 words a day and I'll get there when I get there, this will tell you exactly when you're gonna get there. It will also calculate what percentage you're at to getting there. So you can play around, which is really fun, and say, well, if I write 3,000 words today, I'm gonna be 27% there. But if I write 6,000 words today, I'm going to be 32% there. And it's just mindset. It's all about the mindset. So go check that out. That's in the group. If, you, um, if you're not already in the group, just request access. Answer a couple questions about where you are in your journey, and we'll get you right in there. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.